There's been some debate over Darwinian evolution. That sure has been. I think everyone should know the theory of evolution. It's a very useful theory to know. Many have said that it's the most important theory in science. That's certainly one opinion. It's been said that nothing in biology makes sense without evolution, and that to reject evolution is to reject all of modern science. You're kidding. What? People have said that? Yeah, they say it all the time. But that's absurd. There's almost nothing in biology that requires evolutionary theory to make sense. What do you mean? I can understand how the circulatory system works without asking how it evolved or even if it evolved. I suppose so. Does one need to know anything of Darwinian evolution to understand the digestion of food or gas exchange in the respiratory system or the filtering of toxins in the liver? I suppose not. And where did you hear that to reject evolution is to reject all of modern science? I read it on Facebook. Come now, if a person rejects Darwinian evolution, do they reject electrons or the laws of thermodynamics or the water cycle? No. Maybe you should stay on Facebook for a while. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, we need to discuss natural selection. Certainly a vital part of Darwin's theory. Natural selection is mentioned even in the title of Charles Darwin's pivotal work on evolutionary theory. On the origin of species by means of natural selection. That's the title. What do you suppose it means? It means natural selection can produce amazing adaptations which allow species to survive in their environment. And just how does natural selection produce these adaptations? Well, in every population, like this population of rubber ducks, the members of a species will have certain variations. The variety in this population is primarily one of external color. Yes, we have yellow ducks, blue ducks, green ducks, and red ducks. Now we have something called environmental stressors, meaning something which the ducks have to overcome to survive. It may be a simple need for food, a change in the environment, a disease, or a predator. What environmental stressor will these ducks face? They are facing duck hunters. That seems appropriate. These duck hunters are slightly colorblind and can't see the color red. So by happy chance, the red ducks don't get hunted when all of the others are. Pretty soon you'd have a population entirely of red ducks, as all the other ducks have been turned into duck tacos. That's right. The population has evolved due to natural selection. That's fascinating. Thank you. But it doesn't answer the question. What do you mean? I mean you haven't shown how natural selection produces adaptations. Sure I have. The ducks are all red now. But those ducks were already red. Natural selection didn't make the red ducks red, it killed off the other ducks. Well, yeah. Darwinian evolution is supposed to explain the origin of a species. Naturally. That means it has to explain where the new genes come from to turn an old species into a new species. That certainly sounds correct. Your example shows a 75% reduction in the alleles for duck coloration. It what? It's a huge step backwards. Look, I took this right out of the book. But you said natural selection produces adaptations. I did. And Darwin's book title says natural selection is the means by which new species originate. It does say that. So how is natural selection going to make new species and adaptations by killing off most of the variety in a population? Well, maybe when the other ducks are dead, something else happens? We'd better hope so, because this is never going to turn bacteria into wolves and cabbages, which if I may remind you is the story evolution is supposed to be telling. Well, but if we start off with a diverse population of bacteria, and over millions of years, many of the different kinds go extinct, Oh, yeah. No wolves, no cabbages. I think we need something else to happen. Uh, I'll see what the memes on Facebook say about it. Oh, again with the Facebook! Oh, <laughs>